hello everybody welcome to my show today um, I've introduced myself a thousand times many times uh, my name is uh, Joseph Mbele um, the Tanzanian um, those of you who follow my channel already know uh, my story and so today I have a very special guest here and uh, I'm very happy to introduce her. Um, she will talk about herself. Um, she's a writer, just published a book, just published a book. And I'm super, super excited to be able to talk with her and uh, get to hear her story. So first, um, let's hear something from you in terms of introduction. Hello everybody. I'm glad to be here. I'm super excited that I'm here with my mentor. Professor Mbele helped me through all the process of publishing, so but I have to give him the credit first before I introduce myself. My name is Lucien La, but I use the pen name Lulu Kidilok. And the pen name is very important to me because those are the names that they called me with when I was growing up. So it is not just something that I invented, it's still part of me as a person and part of the history of the book I have written. So, so Kirillak, yes, how did uh, you get that name? <laughs> I, 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 as, a, as a little um, growing up, I was really rambunctious, as they could put it that way. Mm -hmm. So when I was in that state, uh -huh. the best thing, instead of, you know, we were not allowed to insult each other okay. at home when we were growing up. Okay. So the only way my siblings could just tell me I am in that state, it will, they, will be called, they will call me Killilock. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I will know I am off tune. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. So, yes, it's interesting, but I don't know where the name came from, but uh -huh. they, they called me Kidilok. Okay. Yes. Sir. And which part of Cameroon? I'm from uh, Bamenda, Northwest uh -huh. Province. Northwest. Yes, yeah, Northwest that's, Province. That's the Anglophone. The Anglophone region, Anglophone yes. Region, yeah. I'm from the Anglophone yeah, region, yes. Yeah. And so this is the book. This yes. This is the book. Um, <laughs> I'm holding it and uh, I'm very excited about it. This accomplishment is called Candy of Freedom. Um, maybe you can tell us a little about it. And let's start this way. Why did you write the book and what is it about? Why did I write the book? Okay, As a human being, as a woman, as a girl, I think I've had a lot of experiences where my own voice was shut out. And I have always loved writing, but I don't want to write fiction because fiction doesn't really depict what I have inside of me to bring out. What I have inside of me to bring out is my own story and my own experience. So I wrote The Candy of Freedom, which is like a memoir that talks about my relationship with, um, with norms, rigid norms and rigid spaces that I was never so comfortable and good at uh, when I was growing up. So. It's also a part of like liberating myself from the thought of the limiting, the limitations that we had growing up. The don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. Writing this for me is also another form of liberation. I am putting down the burden of don't do this, don't do that with all the strict and rigid norms. And I'm moving into a space where I feel I'm more comfortable with myself. Okay. Accepting who I really am, who that person within me is mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. just trying to be a better person for myself and for society too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah this is very touching and um, I remember when we first met um, you didn't even show that you were writing or that you are an aspiring writer we met at um, television station or something yes we had there uh, yes yeah, yeah, we had been invited to talk yeah. about. We were invited my by book, Samba, right? yes. yes. And we were talking about my book. <laughs> yes. And that was the first time we met. Mm -hmm. There was no indication whatsoever that you were writing. No, I, I, I didn't. Yes. Uh huh. 
and then um, you came to a talk of mine i gave yes. a talk and how did we connect in terms of you know your book i think um well, you, I, ordered, you, ordered, ordered some, you ordered some books chickens in the bus for some in schools bus, in cameroon yeah. yes yeah and you came to deliver the book yeah and yeah. then we yeah and that's where you suggested i think that you had a manuscript or you're planning yes to write yes. something yes I've, I've always been interested and yeah. i've been struggling yeah. to write yeah and it's always been a challenge yeah because all the methods i've used have not been successful yeah yes and even yeah. some of the institutes that i went to they were trying to change my voice and that is what i didn't want anybody changing my voice also yeah 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 so i didn't feel free publishing with people who want who wanted to change my voice right yes. i remember yes. and it was at this point that i suggested that uh, there are ways you can publish your book yes with no interference from anybody yes yeah and uh, that you would not have to pay anybody no interference no payment yes. just easy do and yes. that that is why the candy of freedom is like one of the sweetest things i ever yeah. wrote because i had the liberty to write mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the way i wanted to write and all the ideas here are mine so yeah. let me confess if there's yeah. anything there that you yeah. have any questions yeah. about it please ask yeah. me don't ask professor Mbele. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. ask me yeah <laughs> and uh, it, it was quite pleasure working with you and um, oh. I remember you had uh, that the draft within a very short time yes and I was very surprised that you had so much energy and uh, determination to get this thing done yeah. so and I can't believe that it took only two months or so yes yeah. because in my head yeah this this draft has been in my head for more than 20 years aha uh -huh. that explains it yes the story so yeah. it's been the beginning of the draft and where i am presently in my in my uh -huh. life i have been writing this draft in my head yeah. so that was why it was easy for me to take a short time and just to produce the draft for you uh -huh. the ideas were already there I, I didn't have to go looking for ideas yeah and yeah so. yeah 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 you worked very hard on it and uh, uh -huh. very consistently and uh, you were very adaptable you know if i suggested something you did it and uh, you know um had you written anything before that had you is this the first book that you're writing the first attempt to write a book let me put it I, I have i have some manuscripts oh you do yes but okay. my intention when we spoke i wanted to send the manuscript on the uh, women and um the way women are treated treated within our culture yeah, and yeah. our society and how yeah. the, the norms how they treat women the misogyny the infantilization of women and yeah. i wanted to that was what i wanted to write about first but when i went i was working on that draft uh -huh. the thoughts of this kept overshadowing what i wanted to write uh -huh. so I, I i just thought if if this is overshadowing it and it's not part of that draft yeah let me put this down and see what comes out of it okay yes and i realized after putting this down and releasing this one yeah it, it's like it's a pathway it, this one is more like a pathway releasing me to continue now working on the other drafts without uh, mental interference uh -huh. yes uh -huh. wow yeah, that's very interesting, very interesting. And I'm happy you have decided to tell your story your mm. own way. And it has really been a pleasure for me to be following this journey of yours and uh, insisting that uh, it needs to be your voice. Yes. Because it's time uh, voices of women, you know, were heard. You yes, know, the field has been dominated by men. I'm one of the men who has been of writing course, yes. and uh, making all these claims <coughs> about African culture and African culture. Oh yeah. But then, <laughs> at the back of my mind, I've been telling myself, uh, "Where are the women's voices?" Yes. So when you said you were writing and uh, you you were writing about these experiences of yourself as a woman in an African culture. Um, or rather in the African culture because I yes. believe there is such a thing as the African culture mm -hmm. I 
said we need this to complement the whole story. Yes, and we need I, it. Yes, yeah. you remember I told you I was surprised that a man, an African man, yeah. was encouraging me to write. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, where is this coming from? So yeah. that's something I really appreciate. I really yeah. appreciate with you because. Yeah most what i what I, all the things i was talking about there were things that most men will feel offended yeah 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 yes yeah. and most yeah, yeah. they'll feel offended that the woman yeah. thinks like this about yeah. this thing that we do yeah. and this is how yeah. a woman feels you yeah. know but you were open and receptive yeah. and we had yeah. really good conversations about those yeah. things and that's yeah. what also encouraged yeah. me it's like okay yeah. remember this writing this memoir to me was like yeah Okay, I'm going to stand naked yeah. in front yeah. of everybody. Yeah. And yeah. for me that's the beginning of the yeah. journey for the writing. Yeah. As a as a as a career writer for me. Yeah. I had to stand naked in order for the people who read what I would write subsequently. Yeah. To understand where I'm coming from yeah. and what I'm talking about and to relate to the experiences within the context of my own experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. had to be truthful to myself. You yeah. Know, this is. As you suggest, you know, uh, it, it's hard hitting. You know, some yes. of the things you say here, yes. but I was saying we need to hear these things. I, I think so too. Yeah. We need to hear these things uh, for our society to progress, for equality and mutual respect yes. to be established, yes. and uh, just for the empowerment of. Our daughters, you know, the girls, yes. the daughters, yes. you know, if they read your book and they see you speaking like that, you know, standing on your own feet, telling your story uh, fearlessly and very openly like that, um, I believe our daughters will get, you know, a lot of powerful messages from here. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, yeah. you, you just mentioned that my, it, it, look at this, the illustration was done by my daughter. Yeah. She's in fifth grade. Yeah. And I also wanted her talent to come out, not just me as a writer, but also she's a very talented artist. Yeah, she is. And I just wanted to make sure that I don't yeah. forget her in the process of yeah. also promoting my own career. Yeah. And, and she captured you in a very personal <laughs> Yes. kind of way <laughs> and here you are over here and that's how she rendered your image yes she it's, did the photography yeah. the book the design yeah. yeah so this is so precious <laughs> this is a daughter's perception of her mother yes it's a powerful story so it's two women a mother and a daughter who gave us this yes. what about the title now Kind of freedom. Um, what did you intend to convey, you know, with this title? Freedom is sweet. Uh -huh. You uh -huh. understand? Freedom is sweet. Uh -huh. It is wonderful. It's uh -huh. liberating. Uh -huh. it, it, it gives you the satisfaction that yeah. you need. That's why I call yeah. it the candy of freedom. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Oh, yeah, that yes. makes sense. I didn't make that <laughs> connection. Now it makes sense. Yes. Freedom is sweet. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So, congratulations for finally publishing your book. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm excited. Very excited. Oh, you can and, see uh, the joy on my face. I'm yeah. really excited. I'm excited. To this point, yes. Absolutely. And um, I know it's going to, you know, cause plenty of conversation. You know, <gasps> I know. <laughs> plenty of debates, perhaps. Yes. Have you had any readers respond so far? So have there been any people reading it up to this I point? Have, I have had some people, the people who know me, they uh -huh. personally called me. I have somebody sent me a text, but this morning she also went on the website, on uh -huh. the Lulu website. Oh. Yes, to write her review that she said oh. she wants it to be in a place. I said, yes, because if I'm the one doing it, I might be influencing I said uh -huh. you can go. She so she did the review on the website. But before she went, uh -huh. we discovered one of the readers uh -huh. who gave a review. She gave a very beautiful review. Oh. Yes, because 
I don't know her. So, uh -huh. and I don't know how she got Ooh. the book, but she said she got the E version of the book. Uh -huh. She read it and she said she read it four times. Uh -huh. Yes. So she also talked about her own experience in life. Yeah. To me, it was amazing that my experience could trigger somebody uh -huh. to also be, be in that place where they will uh -huh. be able to celebrate their own experience and their Ooh. own joy and freedom of, of realizing that they <laughs> needed to break free of some of these um, mm. restricted norms that we have mm -hmm. been confined in. Uh, into, yes. Ah, so, this yes. is beautiful. And so, for the listeners, this book is published online. Um, www. Lulu. Sorry, www. Lulu. Com. I'll put the address below this video okay. on the YouTube channel. Oh, so you have people showing up already yes. with comments yes, and the reactions. Up, yes. yes. Yeah. So, Oh, this is so. And nice. she said she borrowed the copy uh -huh. from someone who had the e copy. So oh. yes, so and she oh. was. She said I was surprised. She said I read oh. it four times. She oh. gave a five star review. Mm -hmm. I don't know the lady, but I my heart goes out to her. Yeah. I'm like I have to send her some love. This is very very beautiful. <laughs> to send her, it was really beautiful. This she made my yeah. day to see that review. Yeah. So yeah. it's really beautiful. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, as soon as you published the book, you said uh, you really worried, you know, what have I done? How are people going to view this? You know, what are they going to think about me? Yeah. And I told you, it's the kind of experience I also went through. And I mentioned to you, it will come. Yes. There will be moments when you even regret having put something out there. Yes. Especially this one, which is so personal. Yes. And then I said, um, as time goes, you will embrace you will embrace it mm -hmm. uh, as an extension of you. Yes. And um, 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 you get used to it. Yes. You just get used to it. Yes. I, yeah. I, yeah. I, ironically, I was worried for a little while. Yeah. It wasn't that that much worry because. I realize when you have taken this journey towards freedom, yeah, 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 you really don't get stuck in what people think or say about you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, like I'm putting myself out there. Yes, I'm yeah. worried about it, but it's not going to be what I yeah. will focus on. Yeah. 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 So, it, yeah. it's only it's just a few yeah. weeks now that the book we it did two weeks or so, but. I feel so. I feel so fine now. I don't yeah. even. I don't worry yeah. about what people will say. Or yeah. you, there will be people who have the yeah. negative review. Of it course. is okay. That is yeah. the way they see yeah. it, and that's the way they perceive what has been written. Yeah. There will be people with positive uh, review. It's yeah. okay. That's the way they perceive it. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm done worrying about what yeah. people will say, what they will think. And in your case, since the first readers, you know, the first people who have commented, yeah. have been so you know, affirmative, so supportive, yes. you know, celebrating this. Yes. That already takes care of that anxiety immediately. It, it takes care and immediately. Yeah, funny enough, yeah. My, this, is my, this is what my siblings told yeah. me. So we were all experiencing the same thing, but we didn't have the courage to, okay. to talk about it. Okay. That is how they felt. It was so liberating for them uh -huh. to see me write about this uh -huh. and they realized it is just now that uh -huh. we are realizing we grew up uh -huh. feeling the same kind of oppression pressure yeah, yeah. to get things done in a certain way and yeah. as a as a little child as a girl yeah and we we never ever had that conversation yeah so this book has opened yeah. up that conversation yeah. between my siblings yeah. and myself also ah, that's yeah. wonderful ah, that's wonderful and i'm quite sure more things will come yeah. and um i guess you know something that's very likely to happen because your story is so striking and um, so powerful. Thank you. People will want to hear more from you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you should be prepared to, uh, to get invitations to speak. And uh, yeah, people will have questions. Mm. And, uh, that, that will be fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I believe also, you know, uh, our daughters, you know, our African daughters, our sisters, you know, we learn, you know, from, we we'll get, we we'll get some inspiration from what you have done so they can tell their own stories. Yes. Uh, that every story is worth 
storytelling. Yes. And um, since I've read the book, I mean, I, I, I've read this from when it was just <laughs> a rough draft. I know the details. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, you had quite a remarkable life. And um, I'm glad you had a chance to tell the world, you know, you know your life story. Um, you said or you suggested you also have some other manuscripts. Yes, I uh -huh. do. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. What are they about? The one that is almost done now, uh -huh. which might come out soon, will be um, it's focusing on how women are treated in our different culture. Okay. Tribal, uh -huh. social, and political. Okay. Yes. Okay. And there's a lot of similarity in all the experiences. I, have, I, I spoke to both men and women, not yeah. just women, to get the perspective of why things are the way they are. Uh -huh. Yes, it, it, for me, I want a conversation. Yeah. I don't want a battle. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. because some of the men also, whatever they are doing, they are even unaware uh -huh. of it because they are also bound by that... Um, the rigid norms by which they have to also appear being the strong man yeah, yeah, and yeah, they have yeah. been taught being the strong man this is how you have to be the strong man yeah, yeah. so they are trying to be the strong man yeah in turn hurting the women in turn so it's yeah. it is so yeah. it is it is yeah. there is also a level of ignorance that is yeah. playing within that yeah. that uh abusive uh relationship between yeah. men and women within yeah. the cultural context yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it's important for us to start that discussion and with men, yeah, not yeah, just yeah, women. Yeah. Yes, Absolutely. I, I think it's important. Absolutely. Yes. Liberation has to, you know, affect, you know, involve, you know, both men and women. Yes. Yeah, otherwise yes. it won't be liberation. Yes. You know, it, won't it cannot be, be one sided. It, won't, yeah. it won't be, yes. As you say, unfortunately, the men also, you know, from the time they are boys, they assimilate those same values which yes. are toxic. Toxic, yes. And uh, they just grow up, you know, accepting these things, not yes. even thinking about these no. things, because everything is so natural. Yes. It's our culture. People yes. Say. Most, of the, most of the men that I spoke to, they didn't yeah. have a second thought yeah. about what they were doing yeah. until, until I said, did you know? Yeah. Just trying to say you are trying to change a woman to be the way you mm. want that woman to be. Mm. You are actually causing destruction in that yeah. woman's life. Yeah. It's like I didn't I never saw it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yes. You don't yeah. even have the the capability of taking care of your own self, changing yeah. yourself. Yeah. What makes you think you can change another human being? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. It, it 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 is I think mean, that's why I think it's yeah. an important discussion to involve yeah. both men and women. Yeah. Yes, to talk yeah. about it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think in the course of our conversations, I told you I deeply appreciate, you know, the things I'm learning from you. Mm -hmm. I said it, and I will say it again. Uh, we had deep conversations about things, and you opened my eyes. Uh, in fact, there were times when we talked about my book. Yes. You know, Africans mm -hmm. and Americans yes. embracing cultural differences. <coughs> um, and I can see you have it over here somewhere. This one here, yeah. published uh, in the same place. Um, yeah, you read it and then you uh, you, you, underlined, <coughs> you underlined some parts and then we had conversations. And I, Excuse me. <coughs> okay, and, and then I told you, oh, I never thought of this dimension. <coughs> You know, I never thought of this dimension. I never thought of this thing this way. And uh, it was a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. It was a wake-up call for me. Um, I mean, I'm talking about things like marriage or this and the other thing. <coughs> yes. But you told me how it is for the woman, yes. the African woman, you know. Uh, in my book, I talk about, oh, yeah, the men grow up and they're supposed to get married, the women are supposed to get married. It's as simple as that from a man's point of view. But then you told me how it is for the women, yes. how they are not really given agency, you know, not given the opportunity to articulate themselves. It's the men who arrange, you know, all kinds of things. 
and I was like, wow, this is a dimension that I didn't know. <coughs> and once again, I said, we Africans, you know, we need to hear the African women talk. You know. <coughs> Excuse so me. That, yeah. yeah. We need to hear the things that we take for granted from women's point of view. That way we'll get a better view, a correct view of the African culture. So as I say, I have really appreciated, you know, your input, you know, trying to give me that dimension that I didn't have, you know, as a man growing up in Africa. Yeah, um, because yeah. you, you just look at the woman, you choose the woman, that is the woman yeah. you want to get married to. Yeah. You go to the woman's family and yeah. they start making an arrangement for that marriage yeah. without even asking the woman. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you go yeah. you, you get married, that is a lifetime decision that you yeah. make. <laughs> and you are not but you are not the one making yeah. the decision. Everybody yeah. else is making the decision yeah. for you except yeah. yourself. Yeah. And if things don't work out as a woman, you cannot uh speak you know, truthfully, the pressure for you, you to conform. You cannot speak. The pressure for you to conform, to be there. If you obey. leave your husband's yeah. house when you're not okay yeah. and go back to your family yeah. house, what do they yeah. do? They yeah. send you back. They send you back, yeah. Even without yeah. promises of the man yeah. saying, I will do better. No, yeah. the man will buy stuff for your family yeah. and come and take you. Yeah. That stuff is what yeah. he is yeah. exchanging again for your yeah. life. Yeah. And those are the reasons I have for saying we do need to have African women writing. Otherwise, if only men continue the writing, <clears throat> and I'm one of the men, yes. we are not going to have the whole story yes. of this thing that we celebrate as our culture. I went home, I got a beautiful girl, I got married yeah. to the girl, I brought yeah. the girl back, we are happy. Yeah. We, you don't even know what is going yeah. on in that girl's mind. Yeah. The girl doesn't know you. Yeah. Did not probably did not even want to get married yeah. to you, but was yeah. could yeah. not go against the cultural yeah. norms to yeah. say no. They will not get married to you, yeah. and they're coming in. Yeah, yeah. So you are saying your next book might be addressing some of these issues. It will be addressing these issues. Great. Yes. We need that. We'll be addressing them. Yes. We, we need that. Would you have any advice for aspiring writers, the girls, for example, the women, from your experience? What would be, say, the challenges of writing that you would like to share with them? What has been the most difficult things? What has been, uh, you know, I don't know. What advice would you give? The, the usual yeah. thing that everybody will face is like, who is going to publish a book? Uh -huh. That is normal. How am I going to publish it? Yeah. But as a personal career, yeah. from that personal point of view, you should be able to know that you can sit in one place and revise your book for 14 hours straight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. You have to put in time. Yeah. Time. Yeah. You can write the manuscript. The, it is easy to have the first rough, rough manuscript. Mm -hmm. But when you start to fine tune the book, mm -hmm. that is when the work gets really more difficult. Yeah. Choosing what should stay, what should not stay, yeah. how you order the book, yeah. and then you now you start editing the language. Yeah. You you start going into grammar yeah. and all of those things. Yeah. You should be able to put the work. It's it. I think any aspiring writer should feel the joy uh -huh. of doing that work for themselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I imagine you feel very happy that something you have carried for twenty years or so. Yes is already out there it's, out it's there. like you yes. have laid down you know a, yes. a burden yes somehow yes. yeah so now that um, um your book is out um i think you feel a lot of relief oh yes a, a lot, lot of, of relief, relief yes. and um, i really celebrate with you thank you because uh, you know laying down a burden let me call it a burden that you had for so many years and uh, worrying, you know, whether you'll ever be able to write and publish yes. the book and still, you know, the story is there within you mm -hmm. and it's, uh, you know, bursting basically, yes. you know, and, uh, uh, and you have no way to actually actualize it. 
in yeah. terms of you know making it into a real book um, would you like to share with us maybe some part you know of the book maybe read a paragraph or something yeah let me i'll read a paragraph that might have a little context but i will start with a very heavy paragraph because Our culture, since this is talking about our culture and the rigidity within yeah. our culture, yeah. I want to talk about religion. Okay, okay. I want to say something about religion. Okay. So people would understand exactly what I'm talking about in here. Mm -hmm. Yes, not just... Like many other people, I have done religion. <laughs> yeah. I have done religion and I am a cradle Catholic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I am more immense in religious culture than even my traditional culture, mm -hmm. the tribal culture or socio-political culture, mm -hmm. in something that I got into also later in my life. Mm -hmm. But religion has played a significant part in, the, in my life. And one of the things that I want to talk about is I was talking about the sacrament, the value of the sacrament. Mm -hmm. Why I'm choosing this one is one of the people who gave me feedback said that was very courageous of you to say that, mm -hmm. but it's also important mm -hmm. for people to understand. Mm -hmm. The sacrament of baptism, mm -hmm. that's what we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Catholic catechism, mm -hmm. I think it should be Article 1, 21, 20, is it 21, 25? It's talking about 21, 21, 13, mm -hmm. something like it's talking about the baptism. And at about 21, 30, 25, they say, those who have not been baptized mm -hmm. cannot go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So, which, is, which means if you have, if you've not been baptized, you die. The, you are stuck. Mm -hmm. So I lost my son at six months when I have not baptized him. Mm -hmm. So you know how traumatic that was for me mm -hmm. to sit down every day and think of the fact that I did not baptize him. Mm -hmm. So I have cost him his way to heaven. Mm -hmm. That was hell for him. I was responsible for that mm -hmm. and it took me quite a while to mm -hmm. get over it mm -hmm. and so this one okay this is the place where I talked about it that's page 40 mm -hmm. yes that's when I lost my six month old baby who was not baptized at the time of his death I was tormented by the fact that he would not go to heaven. Mm -hmm. He had not been cleansed of original sin. I felt guilty for not baptizing him because I had my own selfish motive to take him home and baptize him with my parents. Mm -hmm. I was advised by fellow Catholics to offer the 30 days Gregorian masses for the repose of his soul. That was the best I could do to save his soul. I did offer the masses and had friends and family offer masses for him. The thought of not baptizing him brought me shame and guilt that only aggravated my pain as I struggled with grief. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, yeah. I realized the sacrament of baptism is something that is attached to religion. Mm -hmm. But the cruelty of attaching those sacraments to salvation, mm -hmm. it's extremely painful. And to be able to have the freedom after over 10 years of pain and worry, guilt and shame, mm -hmm. that my son did not need that baptism to see God. Mm -hmm. He is of God. He came from God. Mm -hmm. So he will go back to where he came. The father has taken back his son. Mm -hmm. So, but it took me a long time to yeah. get to that point. And I wasn't taught that by the church. Mm -hmm. It was in my pain mm -hmm. 
and in my struggle and through contemplative processes that I came to understand that. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine the church will tell you, you will not go to heaven because you're not baptized. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy, the God who created me is a God of love. He will not shut the door for me because I did not do a religious ceremony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is important mm -hmm. for people to understand mm -hmm. the space between religion mm -hmm. and the space between you and your God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Religion has its place, yeah. but religion does not substitute God in your life. Yeah. That's what I got to understand. And yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> if you read the book for that, then yeah. you you would have the, the the conversation. You understand how it it, yeah. it, it dawned on me and yeah. and how I handled it. It did yeah. not make me say churches, but no, no church. It, religion has its own place, mm -hmm. but just in a way that doesn't serve me, mm -hmm. and it did not serve me at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, mm -hmm. I think that's a very powerful testimony, and uh, as I have suggested, you know. Uh, or as I've stated, I have followed this story uh, of your writing, mm. of, of this book, from the very beginning, and I know the spirit with which you write this book, and uh, the section you have identified mm. typifies, you know, the spirit of the entire book, basically. Mm. Uh, it's very sincere, uh, it's very generous, because you are not dismissing or, you know, attacking, you know, anybody or any institution. No. You are pointing out the weaknesses, the things that really don't seem to make sense, or the things that uh, put us into serious dilemmas. Yes. And then you open the door for people to maybe discover religion for themselves, yes, away from the institutional practices, practices of religion, yes. yeah, away yes. from conventional beliefs yes. and so on. Yeah. As an individual in a predicament like that, you need to find your own way. Yes, you need to find yeah, your own way because yes. it's all about you. Yes. In the final analysis, it's all about you. Yes, and um, um, I think on that note, you know, we can. Uh, conclude the conversation today it's a very powerful conclusion that we have given here and the thought provoking and uh, we need those types of you know uh, yes. conversations yes. we need to hear these kinds of Thank ideas you. Thank you. and so once again um, I had the privilege today to talk to uh, uh, Lucien uh, from Cameroon who has just published a book, her first book, and she's super, super excited to finally have, uh, you know, done that. And uh, finally, finally excited that, you know, she has her book out in the public and people are already reading it. Yes. And um, I wish you all success. And, oh, thank you. Uh, it's thank been you. a pleasure, you know, working with you. And uh, it's a pleasure to chat with you on my program, my YouTube program. And so I hope we'll have some opportunity to talk again another day. Yeah, hope, Absolutely. hopefully it's been a yeah. pleasure. You yeah. know, you've been really a great mentor to me through this process. It's yeah. been wonderful knowing you. It's been a delight and to see the sacrifices that you made for me to be able to get to this point where I am, I am immensely grateful for that. And I thank you. I thank yeah. you for being the wonderful mentor that you've been to me through this process. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. And I knew deep inside, you know, that um, we need to do this for the sake of our children. We need to do this for the sake of our cultures. We call them cultures. <laughs> yes. And uh, above all, <coughs> you have a right to have your voice heard. All the women whose voices have not been heard, they have the right to have their voices heard. Yeah. And I will always support that. Thank you. I will always support that. Thank you. Well, um, that's it for today. Keep um, visiting my channel. 
and uh, I'm happy that I'm now able to have guests uh, like today. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for coming. You're to welcome. My thank channel. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your time. Yeah.